Hello everybody, and welcome back to episode 5, yeah, video 6, episode 5 of the official podcast. Um, we are here with myself, Tashi Scroll, Callum Davies, we have Lucy, whose screen name is just Lucy, and we've got, Vor we've got Voron slash Nickel. Um, we may very well have I Am Love the Anime, or whatever his screen name now is. <laughs> I George Am Love Hughes. the Anime, yes. He may... Oh, I am indeed. I'm indeed. I'm yeah. indeed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm indeed. The he love went... anime, yes. He went up to the character limit on Discord, didn't he? Yeah. Anyway, he might be joining us later on, but uh, we shall see. Um, and you may notice somebody else. We have a very special guest, actor Tom McGovern, Hello. who I got through my amazing booking abilities, <laughs> and not totally not because he also happens to be the uncle of Lucy and <laughs> Katie, my girlfriend. Not at all. <laughs> Hi, lovely to be here. Um, um, I actually have a point to make about what you're saying, Tom. You're talking about like seeing people in your living room. You have been on like well-known TV shows. Like you were on Doctors, which I would like to say very good. It's the only episode <laughs> I've seen of Doctors, <laughs> yeah. and I saw it as soon as it came out. You know, I got you know, Mum was like, "Oh, we'll say, watch this. Tom is in it," and I watched oh, yeah. it. and It was great, and I really enjoyed it. It's and uh... then you've also been on Casual. Holding, yeah, this it's the same thing, Hobby, it's, it's the same hospital, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I did Holby for a wee while, and uh, uh, oh gosh, uh, yeah, I don't know, a, a few a, a few things, but I'm, I'm not I'm not known uh, for my television or film um uh, <laughs> appearances. Um, it's it's funny that this this week, well, last week. I, I auditioned for the first time by Zoom for a movie called The Road Dance, oh. uh, which is being shot in the island of Lewis. And I still haven't heard yet if, <laughs> if I've got the gig or not. I'd, um, <laughs> but I, I check I am... Uh, uh, the internet movie every, database, every yeah. day and every day there's another member of the cast and it's not me oh no <laughs> <laughs> but that the, sounds so sad it, it's kind of because it's the only way sometimes it's the only way you can find out <laughs> uh, and but the, the character that I was up for ha hasn't hasn't appeared yet. I was, so there's still time. Still I holding was, hope. I, 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 was just yeah, about to, I was just about to say, ho ho hopefully the day doesn't come where you see that the character you auditioned for. Yeah, is, and then you uh... go, oh shit. But that, it's a funny thing because that, I, I, mean, I, I bring that up because um, there's a, I mean, it doesn't matter how long you've been in the business. You When you audition for something, every, all actors want to know is how long how long do I have to wait? You know, uh, I, I find increasingly in the last few years, they don't even let you know. They, in the old days, they used to let your agent know that you didn't get the job. Now they just keep you hanging on for, you know, and it, you don't know until you hear someone else got the, the gig, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, I feel like, sorry, somewhat unrelated, but I feel like that's gone the way of jobs as well, just like job interviews. They used to, they, they at least used to uh, call you back to say that, unfortunately, you, you didn't mm. um, get the position, but now they just, just, they only call you back if you got it. It's just so rude. Uh -huh. It's just rude. And <laughs> I feel like you did have, or to me certainly, you you did have. There is one thing in our local area that is Perth. I've I've I've. This isn't me uh, giving away my address. I've previously <laughs> made it known on streams that I uh, do live in Perth. Um, one kind of uh, play that you've been doing that um has found some success that I would like to talk about later if mm -hmm. that's okay. Yeah, sure. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this or not. You can say anything. Honestly. Can I? Yeah, anything. Am I allowed to ask about your relationship with David Tennant? Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. Um... I actually mentioned I mentioned this last week that there was a just, yeah, you know, did you... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or oh. David McDonald, as he was probably uh, known. Um... And then I mentioned that my my aunt had danced with him at a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I I suppose. I mean, I had we. I said we had a relationship with David. Uh, we were in uh, the same year at uh, the academy. Uh, David was on the what was then the BA course, which was always looked upon as the uh, the teaching course at at at, at, at uh, drama school or the academy. Uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, I've, I've 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 sorry, <laughs> I've just realised you both have been have played doctors. 
Uh, yes. <laughs> well, it's during <laughs> casualty. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so uh, well, we um, uh, the the we we did a few shows, plays together because when you uh, you would, you would do the stuff you would do at the academy, and then you, but you were also we 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 started up theatre companies when we were there uh, with other groups and. Uh, 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 David and I and uh, a few others we did uh, we did a production of uh, Twelve Angry Men. Uh, that was the that was the first time we we acted uh, together. And and that who else? Greg Wise. Do you know Greg Wise? Greg Wise. He's married to. Oh my goody! What's her name? She's. Uh, she used to be married to Kenneth Branagh. Now she's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! What's her name? She's she's so famous. I can't remember. John, uh, John, Nicol, just look up look look, look up Kenneth yeah, Branagh. Get on lives. Chrome again. Look up. It, it's it's um, <laughs> what's her face? It'll probably she's, yeah. Just, uh, Wikipedia Kenneth Branagh. Why just, can't I remember her I'm name? Afraid. I'm afraid I've not. Oh my God! Uh, I, have, I have absolutely no idea. Who Lindsay you're talking Branagh. About. No. Uh, no. Kenneth. Branagh the other one was married to. Oh, Emma, Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson. Oh, Emma Thompson. Dean okay. Emma yes. Thompson. Yes, Emma Thompson. Oh, yeah. Emma, Emma, uh, Emma uh, was. Uh, she, well, she's married to Greg. Uh, Greg was uh, uh, in the same year as me, and uh, we were we were all good pals, and we did a this a great production of Twelve Angry Men, where I don't know if you know the movie Twelve Angry Men. Yeah. Yeah. Well, David Fine. David played the Henry Fonda character, and I played the. Lee J. Cobb character, who was the last person to come around, and we had a really good uh, success with that 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 show. And then we did we did we 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 did a couple we did a couple of things. So I we got on I we got on really well. Uh, I did when we left drama school, we did a, a production of the Resistible Rise of Arturo Ui, which I played Arturo Ui, and David did other various things. And then uh, he after that he went off to London. And I haven't really, I haven't seen him since. I mean, I've, he's, he's, we've got a mutual friend that uh, that he's kept in touch with, Alan. But uh, I haven't really, I don't have a, I had a relationship with him at that point. You know, we were we were pals, but uh, I don't have a relationship with him now, and I haven't seen him since he uh, skyrocketed with uh, Doctor Who, I suppose. I, I don't know if you. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a huge Doctor Who person, but I, I, you, you, you guys are, and you probably, you probably know. I don't know if you know this, but David wrote to when he was a kid. He wrote to there was a Doctor Who fanzine. It was. Did I, you know that? I, I do happen to know a lot about ah, that actually because well, it was it yeah. was it was um Doctor Who that got him in that first made him want to become an actor, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. And his um. His doctor was who was it? Pat, no, not Patrick Charlton. That was the first one, wasn't it? No, yeah, we figured yeah. it out last week because we were also talking about it. Patrick um, All we know is that it wasn't his wife's dad. No, it was. No, it was. It was, it was the it other was. one. Was it? No, no, it was him. It was his wife's dad. But we thought his wife's dad was someone else. Oh, so yeah, it, that's that's his what now it was. wife's dad. I thought his it was Colin yeah, father-in-law. Yeah. I thought it was Colin Baker, but you, uh, Pat, it wasn't. No. It was, I know who who, who was it. Um, um, well, the, well, the first one was William Hartnell, wasn't it? Yeah, Sick Patrick. Uh, Peter Davison. Peter, Peter Davidson. Davidson. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and and it was so it was Peter Davidson's um, doctor that first inspired David Tennant to become an actor. And quite aside from him, obviously being able to do to play the role that uh, inspired him to become an actor, um, he's now married to George Muffet, whose dad is I've, I've completely forgotten the name again. Peter Davidson. Is uh, who's uh, so his 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 doctor is now his dad in law. <laughs> but he but he also I think he somebody said to me and I don't know how true this is that he the the the, the guy who ended up directing the new version of Doctor Who who is you know who this oh, is oh Cr- Chris Chibnall no uh, it's not uh, oh St- uh, Stephen Muffet but to my knowledge they don't there's no relation between no but apparently there was there was someone. He, but, who was the editor of this magazine when he was, and when David was a young boy? He had written to this, and he ended up directing or be producing Doctor Who, 
and he got when Chris when Chris chucked it when Eccleston chucked it. Okay. Uh, apparently, David was already lined up by this guy who was that that makes perfect sense, I suppose. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> this is all this is all sort of hearsay, I suppose. But um, it's allegedly, allegedly, yeah. allegedly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's I, a term I, we've used often. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know if you know this. You, you, probably, you probably do, but um, uh, Lucy. I think it was on stream, or it might even have been when we were just hanging out. But Lu- Lucy made the point that his his now wife he met on an episode of Doctor Who, um, in that. which she oh, yeah. oh. she was playing his or you know the Doctor's daughter. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's really strange. I know it's just that he's married to the person that played his daughter, and that's how they met. Yeah, he, he, and there's oh, quite oh, an age gap as well. Yeah, it's like oh, oh there's thirteen years, I think. Oh, oh, my wife! I met her. I met her when she when she was my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, although she played a she did play an adult daughter, like she wasn't playing like yeah, a yeah. five year old or something. Oh yeah, yeah. The, 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 I, I believe the whole. It was. It was like this was genetic. It, she was. She was a clone of him or something. Uh, he, yeah, she, she, like she, a she was a fully formed creation. person made from a from a bit of skin on his <laughs> hand or something. I did. I did work because with he was clean. Ah, so yeah. I did work with another. Yeah, doctor, Tom. There's oh. Doctor Who. Uh, Sylvester McCoy. Oh, flipping spoons. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, so, so, that's so, what it was so, known for, wasn't it? Playing the spoons. Yeah. Oh, he's yeah. just Sylvester's just mad. He's just mad. He's he's a he's a he's a clown, and I mean not in the best. Oh no, yeah, 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 yeah. Of, of, of the word, I did a a Molière play, uh, which is the La Malade Marginaire, which is we called it the Hypochondriac. I suppose that would translate. And uh, was it that? Yeah, and. But he was a terrible upstager. <laughs> Do you know when he wasn't speaking, he would he, would, he had a walking stick and he would do little trips and stuff, <laughs> just completely pulling focus. <laughs> I can I can kind of, like, but he's but in a nice way. No, no, yeah, but I could I could kind of like that doesn't surprise me. No, that seems like something he too. Yeah, he was, oh gosh, but he was he's he was quite mad. Quite, Back to quite so because I, I I might have gotten this wrong, um. How old were you and was he called David Tennant when, or was he still McDonald? He was, he was called David. I think he changed. He changed his name while he was at drama school. Uh, from uh, you know, it's the Pet Shop Boys. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he yeah. got that, yeah. that. That that's not that's apparently that's that's not the line he likes to tell people. Not now, but, yeah. he, but he did then. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he doesn't say it now. But then it was a he, he was a big Pet Shop Boys fan. That's why, uh, which would make it would make total sense at the time. Uh, you know, late eighties. What, what? Well, 80, oh, go, go know? on then. Go on then. Let's let, let's play this game. If you if you were to okay, everybody, let's go around. If you were to um have the stage name of the last name of the person you most idolise, in, in in that David Tennant took, is it Neil Tennant? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. Got, yeah. got it from Neil Tennant. Yeah. Okay, who would I be? I'd be. I'm just trying to think. Who would be my my favourite? I don't want to go. I mean, I quite <laughs> like David Tennant, but um, I wouldn't say. Oh Christ! Ah, uh, I'm just trying to. Who would be the? I really like Tim Minchin. I guess Callum Minchin. There you go. <laughs> Callum Minchin. Well, I, I guess I would be terrible, but I'm not Welsh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like that. I like that. Got it. Um, I might be. I might be a baritone, but I'm not Welsh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this isn't about like what. This is just. This is just if you replaced your last name with with like with the, the last person name. you most idolised. Yeah. yeah. No, even even I think. Nickel Terrible would just sound really weird because <laughs> it's a Scottish name mixed with a Welsh. Name. I was, a, yeah. I mean, so is mine. Callum Davies. Callum Davies. Yeah. Yeah. Callum. Yeah. Callum Inchin. Yeah. Sounds like one word. <laughs> Callum Inchin. Sounds like something of Doctor Who. We are, we're back. We're, back, we're back with Callum Inchin. Callum Inchin. <laughs> I'm looking up at the Callum Inchin. <laughs> It's like a mountain range. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have to do so many Calaminchins. Mount Calaminchin. <laughs> that sounds like an exercise. Ten Calaminchins. <laughs> do it now. <laughs> Take four Calaminchins a day to keep you healthy. Oh, God. <laughs> Vitamin <laughs> Calaminchin. Oh, I'm liking this. Those, those legs okay. here. This is this is <laughs> this is definitely what the podcast is like. It usually just descends. <laughs> it descends into madness for about twenty oh, minutes, and then oh. it. 
get sensible again. Anyway, Lucy, <laughs> you're not getting away from this. You've got, you've still got to answer. No, um, well, I actually had to think about it, and I feel like I don't know if you'll know. He's the composer. I was thinking, um, Lucy Powell by John Powell, oh, the yeah, composer. Yeah. Oh. I, I feel absolutely like that, love I feel like him that is a Lucy with Powell, all of my heart. There is an actress because that I've worked with. Well, I was Powell. thinking of oh, him no, because that might be. He so does the music have... for How to Train Your Dragon. Yeah. You can't even have Lucy Just Power anyway because somebody in Equity already has Lucy Power. So yeah. Oh, great, lucky me. So I worked with the Lucy so, Power at yeah. Bristol Old Vic. Gosh, oh my, that was a long 1998. So, Good God. Because I because I I'd been led to believe that um you had a. You had a somewhat sour relationship with David Tennant, but I'm, I'm glad to hear that it's no, not at all. No, I've just uh, we I got, we got I got on really well with David. It's just that we haven't. It's it, it it's kind of weird when you it, it when, just... when you watch from the sidelines, as it were. You know, you watch people going into the stratosphere that oh you, yeah that you've worked with, or you or the uh, or for instance, right? I'll tell you the la the last. Here's, this is this is anecdotal, of course, but it's not anecdotal. It's, it's the truth. It's the absolute truth. Um, Outlander. What's his name? Oh, um, um Simon Callow. No, the the guy that no. plays Outlander. The, the, the other the, one. The lead oh, guy. the other one. Uh, oh, I can't say I've seen it. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I know. I know. Lucy lives near where it's filmed. Outlander. It's a. Uh, oh, what's his name? It's Devil's Pulpit. Uh, anyway. That is the is the leader is a, is is huge. Nico, no. get 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 yeah. Outlander. I'll Google it. I only yes. know Simon Callow because I performed with him on stage. Ah, uh, just type oh, in who's one. the one that's not a Simon Callow. Just you know? again, I, Wikipedia I, is your friend. <laughs> just just go through the cast list um, until Tom says, "Ah, that's it." it. <laughs> why, what, what's, uh, what's Sam Hewen. Sam Hewen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. he's he a fellow of the time. RCS. Yeah. Sam Hewen is like he's 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 huge. Now, right. Okay. But when I was working at the Lyceum, he was. He was part of the. He was a sort of seventeen-year-old member of the Royal Lyceum Youth Theatre, and and quite often we used to get you use the youth theatre to you know to use as extras and and to, to smaller parts and uh, big Shakespeare stuff. And uh, I was uh, my the first time I played uh, the Scotsman in the Scottish play was at the <laughs> Royal, was at the Royal Lyceum, and <clears throat> somebody said to me once. Do you know Sam Hewn who plays out like that? I said, Yeah, yeah, I do. Did you know him well? I said, I said, Well, the last thing I said to Sam was, Get thee to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Funnily enough. And, and they said, What do you mean? I said, Well, I was playing Macbeth and he was my servant. <laughs> and that was, and that was the, so that's my. That's a, uh, Funnily the, enough, Get thee to bed is the last thing I said to George as well. And it's just before that, that scene, that, that, Get thee to bed is just before. Is this a dagger I see before me? It's just it's just right before that, uh, and I'll always remember. And he, he because he's he's a big, he's a really big, tall, tall, good looking guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, but he, he he used to he used to sort of <laughs> he used to sort of apologize for it. You know, he, he would get lower down because everybody was smaller than him. <laughs> and you see, <laughs> if I was you, I'd just. Like just stand up straight and uh, just be yeah, draw people's attention. Yeah, just be gorgeous because you kind of are, really. You know, so just get like, on. With it. But surely, for well, uh, like <laughs> so, so, subconsciously, if somebody is taller than somebody else, then it's hard to because you were playing. Well, you, you said it, so, so I feel like you've broken the barrier. I'm gonna say you were playing yeah. Macbeth and he was playing your servant. Yeah. How how was that from a blocking point of view? Like, well, get thee to bed. Yeah, well, 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 he's a big guy, but it, you know, for me, it didn't matter. But um, uh, it, it it it's just kind of funny now, you know. And I, I've had so many experiences with people that are now huge names that I've worked with, you know. And and human nature, you can't help feel sometimes a bit crap about, you know. I don't. Although. <laughs> Well, oh, I, really? I'm. I I understand <laughs> that, but I feel like it's 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 not it's it's they're all very talented people, as are you. But I think it comes down to they 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 had the they had the big break, they had the luck. It's it's, it's just luck, isn't it's it? Luck. it? Yeah, like I think it's more of a right place, right time thing. It, yeah. You know, what did they say? One percent talent, ninety nine percent luck. It's huge. I mean, I mean, you work really hard, and it doesn't matter what how hard you work if you don't get that little break you know it just it, you don't it, get the opportunity yeah, that yeah should arise that's the yeah. thing you know and, and that's all one asks you know you say you know give me the, give, 
give me the chance. Just give me the, you know, you don't you don't say it like that. But I remember uh, uh, the greatest Labour uh, Prime Minister that we never had, John Smith, who died. He said, just when, when you know, the, the Tories have been in power for so long. And he said, just give us the chance to show us what, you know. And that's that's kind of what you feel as an actor. You just say, get, get, could you just give me the chance, you know, just to. And it, it's, as I say, it, it has become increasingly difficult for people um who aren't you don't have the connections yeah there was a time and there was a time when the 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 bbc the the television and they used to take a chance with plays when i was a kid there was play for today and armchair theater and all these things you won't know and you would you would see people you'd never seen before and you would think oh my god who's that person i want to know more about this person you know and and but now it, it has to you know when when you go I've I've actually had, I honestly I've I've had breakdowns from my agent saying we want a such and such type. They they'll, they'll name they they won't even they'll name somebody. They'll say we want a David Jason kind of thing or we want a do you know it, yeah it, instead of just saying this is the character you know and, not even like he's a Cockney like it's yeah, David Jason. It's mm-hmm. just it's just really so it, it's become really difficult for. Uh, and and when I when I, when I started when I when I first wrote that you talk about what got you into acting or what got David into acting, uh, what what I remember as a kid was when these plays used to come on the television, when they put the credits on at the end, they would say Judy Dench is a member of the Royal Shakespeare Company. There would just be a voice would say that, and I would just go. I want to be a member of the Royal Shakespeare because <laughs> that just sounds like the box, you know. That sounds like and 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 so I I I always thought that that was once you know being a theatre actor was the biggest the best thing. That's what I wanted to be, and I am. That's what I am. But then once you've done it for a while and the money's not great, you start thinking, I wouldn't mind a bit of Give me more. I want a, yeah. a, a, a bit of film, I want a bit more of this, and I want a bit more of that. And that's, again, it's just, it's just human nature. You just get to a stage where you're thinking, I've done, here, I've, I've, I've done 17 Shakespeare productions alone, right? And I, I've, I've, I love it, right? But I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> you were saying- I, I, I want to do. I want yeah. I want I, I know how to do that, and I'll, I yeah. can still do that. But I, 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 I quite fancy a bit in a movie, and a bit, in a, you know, a bit of that. I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to pretend that I don't. <laughs> you know. Yeah. You were saying like how like somebody um it they're not really take a chance on kind of the little guy now, and so often you hear like uh, I've I've certainly heard in, in interviews or just whatever like script writers will say oh we re- re- rewrote this part with david tennant in mind mm-hmm. sorry i keep i keep using that name but no, it's a no, but that's, the podcast but, now, but you're right that's yeah. what, that's what they do they have they, they have a they have they have an image of someone that they want to play it and, and, and so it doesn't even give you a chance no, to try I got yeah. so- well that's like the book the twilight series as well there was a recent article about it that stephanie meyer had written in the books imagining these people as her characters and none of them played them in the film no mm-hmm. and it, she just she just thought completely different people would do it it happens all the, and i got i remember I, I used to do this thing i did it for three years it was a great gig uh, it was called the performing arts lab and what it was was it was a it it, it was a, a week retreat on a farm a tudor farm in just outside seven oaks in kent and um uh, and they used to employ uh, four actors, and the, the the whole premise of this whole week was that we would read movie scripts by young up and coming uh, writers, and they would get really good directors to come in, and all we had to do as actors we had to just live there and read the scripts, and then we would we'd perform them and then we'd all get together at night and we'd have a meal and there was a chef and it was, it was just like it was a really good it was a really great gig and there was this <laughs> script and i was reading this part and it uh and it was a really great part and and we were sitting having dinner and, and somebody said now oh so who did you have in mind he, he, he says 
if you if if you you know Tom that Tom that was a really good read and Tom was doing that and said, what well, how so who who would you like to to play this and he just said to my face Robert Carlyle. <laughs> <laughs> like, that is oh for goodness. So there was me and there was me and Larry Lamb. There was Ashley Jensen. There was we, we, it was a whole and uh, Nitin Gatara. We got employed for three years doing these things and people would and this this is the other thing that some. Pe- somebody else I've really people wanted. can see pe- <laughs> people say things like that to actors thinking that they they're, they're, they won't be offended I know, <laughs> they, yeah. they can say to your face oh you know uh, you know and you just go oh you just, you're just so deflated you think oh I thought I, I thought I did that rather well <laughs> I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say oh because I know for a fact I mean I, I do as well but I know for a fact that Katie loves Robert Carlyle <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I can tell you, Casey probably loves Robert Carlyle due to Once Upon a Time. Yeah, I was about to say, which is yeah. what he's in. And well, I, mean, he's I completely in the understand Monty, that he's great in Train it. Spotting, many other things, but you know. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. But it's a uh, yeah. It's... I've never actually. I've never. I must admit, I've never seen the full Monty, but I know it's about like steel workers taking their kit off. And I've always wondered. <laughs> I've never seen it. But I've always wondered. Does Robert Carlyle take his kit off in that film? <laughs> I I I I uh, I have to put my hand up and say I've never watched anything that he's in. Fair because enough. Because for the first five years of my career, the two of us were up for the same thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are you every, so professional boycott? Then. Every in time. I, we, I mean. Oh, it, oh, it wasn't one thing. It was just no, many no, things. We were oh. think, I mean, I, 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 I knew Bobby. You know, Bobby. I, I knew Bobby well as well that, that before he got. You know, fa- in, in fact. The last thing at that time I met was Shepherd's Bush, some sort of casting for. Oh God, what was it? One of these cop shows about Helen Mirren. No. Oh. Yeah, back in the day, anyway. So, and I met him. Then that was the last time I saw him. And then the next time I saw him, he was. I said he was. I was. I was doing a TV show called Looking After Jojo, which was a six-part BBC drama. Uh, I had a great, had a great part, and I was quite happy. And Bobby had to leave, but um, I hadn't seen him for such a long time. And it, it gets to a stage where an actor becomes such a big thing that you don't actually get to see them until you're doing the scene. Whereas nor- quite no- often, normally, actors all mill to get together and they sit and they chat and they blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, I, I mean, but- I... But it's, uh, I've only known. So, sorry, uh, mm-hmm. I, I've I, I've only known. Um, I could totally understand. Like, mind you, uh, sorry <laughs> again, babbling. Um, I've kind of had both experiences in a way. Um, because I've said this before in um streams and all that, but I'll say it again. So I can repeat myself. Um, to it, to loyal fans, they don't exist. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um I'm I, I'm a theatre set technician, um, but now delivery driver. Um, and when I was working on pantomimes, that was very much the case. You know, as a close knit crew, you know, it would be the director, the producer, uh, the technician, yours mm-hmm. truly in this case. Um, actually, the the, the technician, other technician, um, and you know, dame, uh, flipping prince princess all, all of them we'd all go to flipping harvester or whatever mm, yeah and it was like a it was, it was like a little drama family yeah but then i've also worked at the edinburgh fringe which is very much um they they come on they do your stuff and then go away but saying that um you i did feel maybe it was because i was working basically as tier above the free fringe so it wasn't as kind of go 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 on mm-hmm. on big production um it was more like Close knit rooms, um, but I got to know um, a fair few people. I, 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 Tom. I think, yes, my darling. How did that work for your play? You know, you're the signal man, the one man play. <clears throat> I was. Uh, Do you know? Yes, yeah, I was actually your going cast to ask, and I all. was going to ask about that. Can, well, can the, you tell us about the signal man? Just uh, yeah, the last night party was really boring. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, <laughs> um, just you. <laughs> oh, there we go. Um, the signalment was um, well. You I, you probably know how it all came about. Um, I I rewind till about nineteen. Gosh, when I just came out of drama school, and I, I I went up to Dundee to do my a play, and it was the first time I'd been in Dundee, and uh, d- during the day, I, I had free time, and I I, I had I kind of 
knew about the Tay Bridge disaster, I thought. And then I, when I, I, I looked at what was left of the bridge, of the old bridge, it was still there as a monument to it, still. And I thought, why hasn't there been a film about this? Why hasn't there been a pl something about this? this? This was a huge thing. This was Scotland's kind of Titanic in a way because it was the, it was the longest bridge in the world. Queen Victoria had crossed it. And it, was, and it was this huge trade link between the north and the south which cut out Perth, which Perth wasn't very happy about, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I, and I think I, I started in, back then, it was an embryonic thing about, I, I really want to do something about this. And cut to a few years later, I did a lot of work with uh, Kenny Ireland at the Royal Lyceum in Edinburgh for 10 years. Who was, and then we, 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 uh, we started doing Scott, we, uh, uh, adaptations of Scottish novels. We did Sunset Song, we did the, the Cone Gatherers, we did the Silver Darlings, and and I had this idea uh, about a play about the Tay Bridge, and I I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know how to go about it. And then once one day I, I was reading another novel called The Bridge Over the San Louis Ray by Thornton Wilder, and I thought, God, this is how you do it. This is it's you don't make it about the train or the you make it about the people who were on the train. So I took this idea to Peter Arnott great writer and uh he had he like mo a lot of people they'd heard about it the, most people know the poem the terrible poem by mcgonagall <laughs> about the tay bridge but and peter he he took this and ran with it and then about a a year a year and a half later my my wife and i were camping Derbyshire somewhere and I got a phone call from Peter saying that Dundee Rep wanted to do his oh, <laughs> play. they wanted to do his play called the Tay Bridge and I said that's uh, that's fantastic he says the only thing is Tom they don't want you <laughs> I did so I did read about that I did read about that yeah, so. yeah I mean, oh okay so he says, but you know it's your idea and I, and I got a credit in the poster and he says but he says he says the only the, the reason they don't want it's because Dundee have their own company and, they, that, and that's fair enough and, and he said but I said, if you don't want me to do it, I said, don't be silly. I, he says, but I've got, I've written another play just for you. And it's called The Signalman. And it's a true story about the signalman. When when the train, at that at that point, the, 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 the train was so different now, but the train would come on, it was a single track, and the train would come on to the, to the signal box. And then uh, the signalman would send the train over the bridge and there would be signals between Dundee and and uh, uh, Tayport, whatever it is. Uh, I can't remember the name of it at the moment. <clears throat> and so he, he wrote me this play on my own uh, and it was 40 years, it was the 40th anniversary of the, 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 the train going into the river and it was the very night, the 40th anniversary and the play is set on uh, the, the the bridge the, the bridge collapsed in 1879 and it's the 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 signalman is set in 1919 so it's 40 years later and he starts to tell you about that night and then it goes into the inquiry and it's a it's a it's a fantastic piece of writing i, I mean I'm, I'm probably not doing it uh justice at, at the moment but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a it's a it's a fantastic piece it really is i, I was so uh i was just so chuffed to get to do that it was brilliant uh, because it was rather um <laughs> i was about to and ironically you say de derailed yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um it, it was it was rather derailed if you want um by the whole coronavirus wasn't it <clears throat> yeah um, um i managed to find a video of you recording an extract from it on it what in your garden shed it looked like well yeah joyce mcmillan uh, the uh, crit arts critic for the scotsman she uh, got in touch at, when lockdown happened uh, to she got in touch with me to to see if I would do an excerpt of the signalman uh, that we could put online because they were doing I think they did I, I don't know how many they did different actors the, the video doing, in the article yeah, I'll, I'll link yeah, that yeah make, make and, sure uh, can see it. so yeah I I, I, uh, I got I got to do that and also um, 
there is a German film director who wants to make a movie of it as well. Uh, and I, but it, and hopefully it will get done. But that that's that, that's all to do with funding, of course. You know. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And which is the big word yeah, at the moment of course and, and also uh, he, he wanted to do it didn't he didn't want to make a, a movie as such he wanted to you know like uh not dog what you know oh, is it Lars von Trier who did the movie where everything was set out like a stage play do you, do you know that one mm -hmm. uh and so he, he wanted to make a movie that wasn't it, it was still theatrical but not uh a, not not just putting a camera on stage. He wanted mm -hmm. to. He wanted to make a, a a sort of virtue of it being a stage film about okay. the stage. Uh, actually, his first concept was to 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 be in the dressing room and follow m my character onto stage and start it that way. But then he he's got some this German film director. He's got some fantastic ideas. I just hope we can get it done. Uh, but yeah. it's, it's money. It's just money. Yeah. That's all. There's always the yeah. classic. Um... Uh, you know, go fund me or whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Any, any, what is it? Uh, go, go funding. Uh, yeah. Indie, go go or whatever. Yeah. Indie go go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, go fund me. Yeah. All, all well, they try. I mean, they try. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm just the, as, uh, as Alfred Hitchcock said, I'll, I, I'm just the cattle. I'll just, um, I'll just go where I'm told. I'll let them get. To yeah. The... <laughs> I mean, uh, I'll, but... I'll agree. That's the sort of thing that I say when. I'm in rehearsals for, um, for Nikos. It's I'll sit where I'm told. Yep. I will sing when the I... part that I'm told to sing, and whatever so... the Lord Christopher Bell says is correct. <laughs> I will so, do. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, are you are you, say, are you saying uh, Alfred Hitchcock said that he was owning like, the cattle? No, no. Alfred, I'm, Alfred... I was about to say that doesn't sound like Hitchcock at all. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock says all, all actors should be treated like cattle. That, that sounds more like Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah so, so I thought, well, I, yeah, I'll do that. Just tell me where to bloody go. And I'll, 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 I'll perform the thing. You know. I mean, um, I mean, sometimes Hitchcock was a bit too much in that way about it. Really? So, so I heard. I mean, yeah, but he was. Uh, you have to, you have to hand it to him. He, he, he delivered. You know, he was yeah. uh, great stuff. I suppose wow. Kubrick was a lot like that as yes, well. Yes, of course. Yeah. They're like they, they're kind of godlike and to themselves and in, in, in a way they know they know exactly what is required. It's a science, isn't it? Yeah. They, you know, they know exactly what they want. And uh, apparently, in The Shining, um, I don't. Oh, I forget, I forget the name of the lead actress. I know, it's, I know, it's Jack Nicholson, and I forget the name of the lead actress. But um, but Kubrick hadn't told her that that scene was, or that he was gonna, that the door the, the scene was gonna happen. Been, she yeah. she thought that she was um, you know, gonna find a piece of paper or whatever in the. I've not actually seen the film. I'll mm. be honest, but I, I know of the I scene. Have, yeah. But um, he she didn't know that I've was gonna happen, and so obviously, Jack Nicholson in perfect character because he was very uh, Jack, uh, well, Jack Nixon and Stanley Kubrick is very good at um, doing that <laughs> um, so the fear like and the screams are real, real. she is genuinely scared in that moment not sure. <laughs> it's yeah. it's not acting because she had no idea that was going to happen that Jack Nixon was going to come through the door with an axe yeah sometimes I mean sometimes that works and something there's a uh, there's another famous at the end of the uh, at the end of the the graduate have you seen the graduate yeah I've not yeah. I, I've not actually seen it, but Simon again, and Garfunkel music. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I know of it. It's the Miss, Mrs. Robinson, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Oh, are you, Mrs. Robinson, are you trying to seduce <laughs> me? But it's a brilliant at, at the end of it when when Hoffman bangs on the the, the window and she she's supposed to get married and she runs out of the church and the two of them jump onto a greyhound bus and they're sitting in the they're <laughs> sitting right at the back and uh, I don't know who who directed this film, but he just he just kept the camera on and they were both sitting there they thought in the script it said the end so they were sitting there and he just kept rolling <laughs> and it and and they were just waiting for him to say cut and he didn't and they just kept rolling and rolling and honest to god i've never seen two actors so uncomfortable in my life <laughs> it's brilliant it's brilliant because what it was saying is that yeah no, you look at it. You think you say, "Yeah, we 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 ran away," and but 
what the fuck are we going to do now? And that's what was, that was the that's look a, on their face. It was like, <laughs> shit. That's a genius way of, get, of getting that emotion, though. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. You could see them both going, is he going to cut or not? Yeah. <laughs> well, great. they say some of the best, some of the best, like, most iconic lines were improvised. Um, is it, I, I forget the film, but uh, you know the line, you know, oh, I'm walking here. That's Hoffman again in Midnight Cowboy. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that did happen, yeah. That, that, that was improvised, and that was just improvised by, by him. Um, apparently... Apparently, the, it was just going to be they're walking down the street, and then in the background, a taxi goes. But apparently, the taxi went a little bit too early, almost ran him over, and then he improvised the line, "Hey, I'm walking here," you know. Cause, and, yeah, because John, yeah. you can see John Boy, he knows nothing. He knows nothing about what's going on behind. Yeah, him. I've seen a lot of things about actors who on set have had to get their pockets sewn, <laughs> like in their costume, because they've just brought snacks onto set <laughs> or onto. <laughs> the actual performance or when they're off stage they've had food in their pockets and it's melted like yeah. um oh what's his name right well the oh, tom I'm felton just... oh mr darcy would you like a revel <laughs> like Someone... tom tom felton when he was playing draco malfoy he got loads of chocolate in his pocket and was too embarrassed or something to tell the costume, costume designer. designers <clears throat> and so it just got left there and yeah. with Oh, the, Tony Stark, what's his name? Um, uh, Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. He a lot of the time in you can it, like in the films you see him just wh- whip out a bag of crisps or something <laughs> or chocolate, and it, they keep it in like it's kept in as well because it's his character. It's just, his character it's works just for what it. happens. Yeah, I know, I know someone who in fairness, during... in fairness, Tony Stark is just that. That's one of those cases of just Robert Down of like an actor just playing an actor like. Yeah. Tony Stark is just Robert Downey Jr. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're just the same person except yeah. the fact that Yeah. No, uh, I, I know... mean like personality wise. Yeah. I, mm. I I know someone who during blocking of um of a amateur production of the Pirates of Penzance in Perth, um just sat oh, so, at so... the back. Sorry, because uh, I, I, uh, could you just repeat the title of that of that um, <laughs> musical you were talking about? The I... Pirates of Penzance. Oh, the, the Gilbert and Sullivan. <laughs> yes, during the production that I was in of it in um, in Perth, um, the um, during blocking, someone who was a one of the um, the policemen sat at the back with a bottle of coke <laughs> and just was was drinking coke during block j- during blocking and we were just like okay right cool right and then just as we were starting um cat like tread just huge belch <laughs> <laughs> huge belch um and it, it, it was quite quite entertaining uh <laughs> Thankfully, it didn't get to my bit with the crowbar, but uh, it was it was funny. <laughs> it was quite funny. Now, was I know. I know years I, ago now. I know you're a great fan of Gilbert and Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I I do know about it because my 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 grand uh, Lucy's grandpa was a huge uh, Gilbert and Sullivan. He knew yeah. every mm-hmm. word of every bloody opera by Gilbert and Sullivan. He was absolutely astonishing. 82 years old, he could do... It was incredible, absolutely. So, I, yeah, well, all I know about Gilbert and Sullivan I've got from uh, Lucy's grandpa. Could he, could, uh, what, even Major General at full speed? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's, that's, that's some good going. Yeah, <laughs> Prop, yeah. Props to him. And you, get, you get a lot of that. Of course, you get a lot of Gilbert and Sullivan uh, voice uh, sort of uh, exercises at drama school. You know, there's a lot of... Oh. Great stuff. Wow. There we go. <laughs> no, I, think... I was actually really confused because you just up and left, and I was yeah. Yeah. thinking, did we say something wrong or something? No, I've got. Did a bunch we make of a scores. problem? Um, now I, I feel like um, I feel like we've kind of not danced around, but just because we've been talking and all that, not at a. Nickel, you, you you had a question for Tom. I'm sorry it's taking this long. Uh, I've actually forgotten what it was because it's taken that long to get into it. Remember you asking it's about the, R- the R- question. R- R- RSC, wasn't it? RCS even. RCS. Ah, the yes. R- um, yes. What I was looking to ask about was your was your time there and how your experience was. I was there for two years on the B.Ed. course as opposed mm-hmm. to the performance course, but um, I was wanting to know 
if your experience of it was any way similar to how I felt the atmosphere was around it, because I kind of felt it was very, it, it just it oozed creativeness. Well, uh, I, I, I would I would certainly agree. I mean, the, the the thing about me is that I I I came to it quite late. I, I um I had a whole life before I went, uh, <laughs> and um when I. I was I was working in community drama while uh, working in the post office actually uh, at that point, and I just loved working uh, in drama and and, and I didn't I, I got some work at the sits at the sits and theatre uh, just mm-hmm. extra while I was working and and doing the the stuff at the community drama and Giles Hammergirl who was. Uh, artistic director at, at that point was directing uh, what were we doing? We were doing an Oscar Wilde uh, Lady Windermere, I think it was yeah it was, and and I said look, I, I, I'm I'm thinking about giving up my whole life <laughs> every <laughs> job and, uh, and and going to the uh, academy and I, I, I know what I, I know what I have to do, I've got two pieces and uh, and I wondered if you would <clears throat> uh listen to them uh and he very kindly said yes come in tomorrow and tomorrow and lunchtime and and i did them and he he was very complimentary and he said look just just go for it if that's what you want to do you know mm-hmm. and uh, so when i i applied to the iscnd i was so naive i thought you just got in <laughs> i thought you just got i thought you just applied like <laughs> going to langside college or something like that you know just yeah like, <laughs> and i uh, said and then it wasn't and when i and on the day, because it's so brutal, it's and it's I don't know how many of thirty odd people auditioning every week for months, and on the day you you know this it gets it gets rattled mm-hmm. down, and you have yeah. to go to a notice board to see if your name's on it for the next round. Mm-hmm. So I would, yeah. I would just kept turning up thinking, well, of course my name's on it, <laughs> and it was. <laughs> And then, and, then it was, and then it was down to the last two that day, and it was me and another girl. And uh, and the last the last part of it was improvisation, which I Jesus, I I, I have no idea what I was doing, but um, kind of the point, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it kind of is, but you know, uh, and uh, and then a couple of weeks later, I got a letter saying I got in. I was like, yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Until I no, got I, there, <laughs> and, I, and yeah. I heard all the horror stories. I was thinking, there was a guy in my year who tried five years in a row, and I was thinking, mm-hmm. what? And I was, and there was only t- it was twenty odd people, and there were there was yeah. only three of us from Scotland, and I was like, oh my god! So yeah. when I got in, I realised that. I, I was there for the absolute right reason. I really just wanted to be there. I couldn't, I couldn't, there wasn't enough hours in the day. I was there to, from morning till night. I was going, to, I was just, I, for me, it was the best, certainly the first year was the best year, one of the best years of my life. Mm-hmm. And I met my now wife at that point as well. But it, it, I, I let you, let you say it was just, it was, creation was everywhere. I, I, I was into classical music and I could go to all these things for nothing. I, I watched mm-hmm. rehearsals, I watched opera, I watched uh, dance, I watched everything and for three years and I just, yeah. it, I couldn't get enough of it. That's that's the honest truth. It was brilliant. That that was something I, I was very happy to discover that students got free tickets to everything because I would just go and see as much as I could. Yeah. Um, Favourite would... performance I saw while I was there was a performance of Simon Keenly's side, the the baritone mm-hmm. um who was doing a selection of schumann and that was in february and i was like i'm doing schumann just now i'm gonna go i'm gonna go watch that and it was just fantastic to see although i was on the teaching course as opposed to the performance mm-hmm. course yeah. which i'm trying to seek entry to just now it's it, it was just it was amazing to be able to see big names mm-hmm. that was locally kind of, to you that was that that was kind of like me when you get free tickets for something it's amazing because because just I, go I, for it when i was working at the edinburgh fringe um the company i was working for there are four major um edinburgh fringe companies and i'm not sure if i'm allowed to mention which one so i won't but um <laughs> the company i was working for one of the kind of perks was um we got assuming there are spaces 
um, our passes got us um, into any production we liked, assuming we weren't working, of um, that was on the Edinburgh Fringe, assuming that production company was running it. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I went to see Mitch Benn. I went to see um, Andrew Maxwell. I went to see a a load of comedy. I saw some um, underground kind of small drama. Half of it was good. Half of it was awful. You know, it's the fringe. Yeah, Yeah. that is what it is. But I just (laughs) saw so much because I didn't have to pay for any tickets. That's great. Yeah. I got to. I, as I say, I got. I. I. I was hugely uh, into uh, classical music as well, and that was just. I mean, gosh, the conductors we used to get, you know, Nima Yervi and all, just and the soloists, it was just ridiculous. And Lorna was, you know, my wife was. She'd be playing in the orchestra. I just. I, I would sit there. <laughs> I would just sit there all day, all night. I just every. I was in it every rehearsal or. And then I was doing my own stuff, and the library was just. It had everything I wished for it every recording of every shakespeare play you could and on vinyl at that point as well you know and oh it was just it was i i, I, I it was like christmas for me I, it really was it was it, the cat that got the cream it, it was just all mm-hmm. there in that one building everything i ever wanted was there <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was fantastic it, it... and you some sort of, I met some wonderful people as well you know from from every when they moved to the new what is the new building because it was i i think i was we were the second i think we were the, no we were the first to start in the new building mm-hmm. actually um yeah and because on buchanan street before it was the old so. Dagenham, and then it was up there was a there was a bit in Athol Gardens, I think. There was a, there was mm. it was all over the city and uh, there was bits and bobs. But it was the first time that uh, the, the 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 music and the drama and the, the kind of got together in a way. They, they were always kind of separate, and mm-hmm. uh, it, it kind of became they they started to do a bit more together, uh, which uh, uh, you'd be stupid not to really. I mean. Uh, yeah, you know, was su- such a, a talented pool of players. Yeah. It was just, you know, I I loved it. I, I it was yeah, I had the time of my life mm-hmm. really. <laughs> one thing, one thing they made us do was, it was a module called ICP, which was um, a collaborative practice, basically, and it was different people from different disciplines creating a performance, mm-hmm. and uh, what we I had. In my team, a couple of dancers, um, some a couple of people from the um, contemporary performance practice course. There was myself and a bunch of other musicians, and we all just improvised music while the people on stage just did their thing. And it was quite amazing to see what could be produced with quite literally three hours a week for one semester. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And one whole week of being able to do it. And it's an amazing thing to be able to collaborate with different disciplines. Mm -hmm. Even disciplines that are completely just unrelated. (laughs) Yeah. But it kind of, I mean, it frees frees up your brain in a way, I I, I found. I mean, I I worked a lot with, uh, I think he might be a sir now, uh, uh, David McVicker, you know David McVicker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, David, uh, uh, we started. In fact, in David Tennant as well, we we, we started a theatre company called, called P- the Pen Name Pen Name Theatre Company. Uh, me, David McVicker, David Tennant, uh, Gray o- Jerry O'Brien, Gray O'Brien, he's called. Yeah, and there was a, there was a uh, Daniela Nardini. It was the whole. We did this, and we. Because <clears throat> we wanted, to, <laughs> we were a bit arsy. We wanted to do classic. <laughs> we wanted to do, <laughs> we, we, we wanted to do good shit. You know, we wanted to do Moliere, but we wanted to mix it up with some, you know, maybe uh, house music or some, or just, it, just, <laughs> it, just, it was all a bit bonkers. But it was, it was a, it, it was great having all these crazy brains just in a room together, uh, having just having a. A ball. I'm really have, sorry. That sounds happened. like the most student thing ever. <laughs> been house music, Molly. <laughs> oh, oh, oh gosh. And, uh, uh, I'm talking about house music. I mean, uh, another brilliant. I mean, he died really young. Martin Martin Bennett, uh, who was Martin Bennett was a 
oh check him out check his music out oh my god he he was a he was in our year and he was he was i don't use the word genius i really don't often uh in fact ever but he was the closest thing i've i've i've, I've, I've known he was he was young he was so he's a lovely looking boy he was just so musically talented it was ridiculous and he uh he, he died very young got cancer it was awful and he was in he, he and lorna played together us to played together and he he was such a star such a rising star and he said to lorna one day he said uh, after she'd played some he said uh I, I think you're the best, one of the best violinists in this whole building. <laughs> and she was like, yeah, it's kind of something like that. He just said she was so musical and then, uh, and she never forgot that. But coming from someone like that, just, and Martin used to, Martin took Scottish music and uh, he fused it with, he would go around, he would go around the Highlands listening to body singers and he would mix it. He had a studio in Mull, I think. And he would, oh, you've you've got to. There's a couple of albums of his. Uh, you've got. I've, I've I've got them. I'll pass them on to you. Yeah, it's Scottish music like you've never heard in your oh, life. It's, so, it's, <laughs> it's such a shame George isn't here because yeah. I think he. George oh, would love. That seems like something George. That is very George. It is George's thing because George is very much mm. electronic yeah. music no, and MIDI stuff. No, no, but but George um, loves like trap music as well. That is. We well, yeah. see the Red Hot Chili Peppers and people like that. They look. They 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 they'll tell you that that's who they looked up to. Martin Be Martin mm -hmm. Bennett was. He was the. He was that. He, he was that person that everybody was like. What's he doing then? Because I've got the two albums. I'll give them to you, and you can. Okay. Uh, I was just, I was just wondering, um, because you were talking about how you kind of went through the conservatory, kind of assuming that you were going to get in. Yeah. Kind of, kind of not knowing it. Do you, do you think that was almost to your advantage? Oh God, yeah. Do you think you'd, you'd almost not have made it if you'd known what was at risk and like had the nerves associated I, I, with? I, 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 mm -hmm. I, yeah, I've been there. I, I think so. I, I, I think because when I, when I found out. The truth, I was shocked. I was absolutely shocked. And then and I thought, well, of course, because there's every drama school in Britain. People are, I, you know, yeah, I just wrote to one. <laughs> Everybody was yeah. writing to four or five all over the country. And I was thinking, well, I just, well, there's only one in Scotland that I know of. So, so it was your un mm -hmm. un undeniable talent and also, and also, um, Undue, Pure confidence. Uh, uh, undue, probably, but nonetheless, Possibly, confidence yes. that just got you through it. Yeah, well, I, I, I had prepared well as well. But here, here, this is this is another interesting thing. Actually, now you just reminded me. Um, uh, Grace Matchett, who was the movement uh, teacher when I was there, uh, long since retired. And Greg Wise, Emma Thompson's husband, <clears throat> he said to her because he had tried. Greg had tried a couple of times. He tried at Bristol Old Vic as well, and and uh, at Rada as well, and and he and he and he got in, and and he he, asked, he said to Grace, he said, Grace, what, so what is it you're looking for when when somebody auditions for? And she said, Well, there's a few things we're looking, you know, for promise, and we're looking for, you know, you can see something. A talent there that we can do something with and but she said but if we don't like you <laughs> <laughs> you've had it yeah <laughs> it doesn't matter how good you are if we don't yeah. like you mm. you ain't getting in I was like, well, quite uh, honestly like from what i was because i was speaking to my singing teacher at the conservatoire um because i am reapplying for the performance course as opposed to the teaching course mm -hmm. and he was telling me about a few different people who have gotten in that are, are similar to myself and it's just like it's they don't they don't care so much about especially for music they don't care so much about your ability at the time they can pay, they they like to see that you're able to be worked with mm -hmm. they like to see that you're open to criticism and that you're able to develop because that's a big part of being any sort of creative industry type is that that criticism to be able to say mm -hmm. right that be told and take it on board that right that wasn't so good why, why don't you try doing this and um he kind of said that quite a lot of the time um if someone shows promise not very good at the time but 
looks good, <laughs> you know, then they'll take them on board because the the looking good, the, the being appeasing to look at is one part of any performing industry. Mm-hmm. So there's something. Um, I, I I think so, and all, I, I, and also that um, if 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 you if you if if you're the finished article, then what's the point? If, yeah. If that's what you think you are, but in, yeah. in hindsight now, because I, what I was saying to you about, or what I was saying to everyone, uh, that when I got there, I was so, I was just so happy to be in that building to have access to all of this, and I think probably in hindsight that that probably came across that I was willing, I I was just so eager to. To be there, to be there, and 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 I'd come from a background where I hadn't done it before, so I didn't, I didn't know what the parameters were. I didn't know, you know, I, I, I remember people saying to me, "Oh, I, I," they would mention Edward Arden, who was the head of drama at the time, and I was, I don't know who you're talking about. And people outside it would know who they all were. I didn't know who anybody was, and I think that was, to my. Uh, I, I think that helped me. You, you uh, didn't. Really. You didn't really get starstruck, so they no, were just. I didn't know who your, your, your yeah. peers, as opposed to yeah. like somebody to look up to. It was just. It was just. I, I just wanted to get in, and I wanted to get. I, I wanted to learn. I just wanted to. To there was so much to learn. <laughs> there was so, and there's still so much to learn. I mean, there's, there's. You never stop. That's the no. You the, never stop there's, learning. There's, there's more. There's still. There's. I. I. I don't know enough yeah. and i'll never know enough um, <laughs> i'm the same I, i'm just i kind of want to know anything and everything that i can about music in general mm. and also to be able to reach a point where i can just say yeah cool i do this for a living and then it would just be amazing yeah um i, I originally started doing the teaching course because i was kind of like right i really enjoy music and i want to have a stable a stable living but then after two years of being on it, I was kind of like, nah. <laughs> let's uh, let let let's take that jump and um, and push towards the performing side of it, which is what I'm trying to do now. So um... now let's start to just wrap up in in a roundabout yeah. way. But um, yeah. first of all, can I just ask: Is there what's the future of your latest endeavor? What's the future of the Signalman? Is it likely to be back on stage or? <laughs> I, th- I, I so because I haven't seen it yet. Well, Perth, Perth are really keen to get it up and running in the spring sometime, but we're in the lap of the gods with this nonsense. This, you know, the the, with the mm-hmm. pandemic. So I, I don't know. I'm hoping that the funding might come along for the film because that's a different thing. If we get the funding for the film, then that that could happen. Uh, mm-hmm. We could create a bubble and 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 make the the movie of the signalman which won't be a it won't be a full it'll be a sort of i would imagine about 40 minutes or something like that really um uh, between that and an hour perhaps so that's that's i'm, I'm hoping for that a uh, the thing that i did the zoom audition for i'm still waiting to hear about that i'll keep checking i am and, uh, and best of luck obviously <laughs> um yeah. Good uh, luck. And yeah. Oh, sorry. Break a leg. Break a leg. Yeah, that would be. Yeah. It. So that's that's break 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 three legs. That that that's all I've. That's yeah. All I'm, break them all. Yeah. Well, I've all, I've also got another uh, like another shatty elbow as well. Another one man piece that play uh, Peter has written for me, uh, which is very interesting, called the Inquisitor. We can talk about that another time. I was about to say I I, I don't know how much liberty you are <laughs> to talk I, about I, it. I, but... I, I, I will talk about that the next time, but. Uh, and that is a, that's a, that's another We'd be more than happy to have you back. That's another brilliant piece. I'd love to come back. It's, it's been it's a first for me. I've, uh, I, I was a bit I was a bit worried about it, to be honest. <laughs> but, no, I really don't be honest. It's just it's Enjoyed just it. however many guy. It's just how many people hanging out usually. Yeah, but uh, it's been lovely. Um, I suppose um, I don't see why there would be. But let, let's do this like a job interview. Is there anything you'd like to ask us? <clears throat> um. God, I wasn't ready for that. Um, oh, <laughs> <laughs> Got a from um, a curveball. Well, well, like a job well, interview. Just, yeah. This can be good improv. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that improv. <laughs> I mean, how how? Well, first of all, how how long have you been doing this? How long have you been doing this? Um, well, 
to be what, the fifth, sixth week. Dep- yeah, it depends what you mean by this. Yeah. Like yeah. the podcast. What are you meaning? The, the pod-, pod, just the podcast itself. Okay, yeah. the, the podcast is in its sixth week, but the podcast came off the back of the stream. The stream yeah. I did even before lockdown. I feel like I've been doing the streams about six months. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It, yeah. I wish and George then was here because we I, d- we weren't here at the very start. No, we joined later I started on. the I started the stream with George. So Christ, it must be about eight months I've been doing the stream. It was a couple of months. I feel like it was the start of the year. It was said before lockdown, and we've been in lockdown for about six months, haven't we? Yeah, yeah but it, I think, think it was seven about, months now. It was yeah. about yeah, seven. January. T- at least eight months, Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I've been streaming roughly once a week for about eight mm-hmm. months. It really doesn't feel that long. And then I ambushed them in June. <laughs> yeah, and so it used to be. Just... And I think I was in July. It used to be I just me and George, 20. and then we and then we got uh, Nickel, William, and Lucy on board, and my mate Kyle also sometimes joins. And for about probably for about. Four months prior to it actually starting it, I'd kind of memed um, and joked about, oh, thank God we never do a podcast or whatever, because it, cause it's that like classic yeah. thing. <laughs> but it just, uh, the more I thought about it, the more I actually felt like I'd quite want to do it. Because um, yeah. I listened to a podcast called The Official Podcast, which is basically just four friends just talk about whatever for an hour. And it just struck so much of when I, when I listened to that to them i heard so much of us and i thought well if they could be entertaining maybe we mm-hmm. could be as well <laughs> maybe I, I guess, maybe i guess that's big maybe my, my next question is what, what, uh... so, sorry so i posited it to um to um everybody saying like hey what if i think i actually said um kind of flirting <laughs> with the idea of doing a podcast let's try doing a let's try doing a recording on saturday see see how it turns out it got cut short because of reasons you know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And it. It was when I bought this that you pitched the idea. <laughs> no, it was, no, you you bought yes. that. No, after. did you not buy that afterwards? No. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you pitched the idea no, and then no, you were like. Oh no! Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sure you the, had the, another the, one beforehand because no, no, no. we spoke about it in the second. No, week. you're no, you're you're co- Nichols correct, but I I I made a joking comment because it kind of had nothing to do with it. You had bought that microphone. And I had been mm. wanting to do a podcast anyway. And it's like, I had said, like, okay, this week, this is what I was going to do. And then, like, literally, an hour before I was about to post it or whatever, like, you said, oh. I posted a picture saying, yeah. I've got an SM7B. And so, and so, I, jokingly <laughs> said, and so I jokingly said, hey, let's, let's do a podcast recording, like, see how it goes. <laughs> oh, and also, Nickel, you can test out your new SM7B. But, like, yeah. the two things were not related whatsoever. No. And here we are, six episodes yeah. in. And, uh, yeah, it's been fun. Other question, one more. Uh, so, wh- where where do you see it going? What do you want to? What do you? What, how do you want to? You just, uh, just I honestly, go along with it I honestly and... don't know. Um, I've always said, um, because right now we're nowhere near being able to make money from it because um we don't really have any sort of a viewership or listenership, um, and so obviously. Uh, Lucy was talking about um, oh why don't we get sponsors and I, and I was just saying to Lucy well the point of sponsors is they pay you to uh, pitch their uh, service or good to an audience the whole point of the mon- them giving you the money is they get you potential customers and it's like if we don't have a listenership yeah. we're not going to get any sponsorships um, and we post these on YouTube and we're in no sort of position. You need a thousand subscribers. I've got right. barely a hundred. To monetize it. Yeah. yeah, to monetize it. We have ninety seven, I think. Yeah. But I'd I Which is more than more than You're we 10% started. Ten percent there. But I Oh you'll get another two with me. <laughs> 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 so um but I never I ne- I never went into this in fact people can't donate to me on the stream. Um, I've not set up like a PayPal or anything, so people can't give me money. If, even, and they can't if, sub to you either. Even if they want to, uh, I, I mean, they could if they want to. I think it just all goes to Twitch. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And I do all this just for fun, basically. Um, if it, if by some magic, um, if yeah, by some miracle magic, um, we get a listenership and we get enough viewers that sponsors want to start coming to us. I wouldn't say no, and obviously I'd split what? it a- every way between um, the crew, mm. but um, I never aim for that because you never. 
I think it's just such an yeah. unhealthy thing to say, oh, we're going to get sponsors and we're going to make... It's mm-hmm. always just been a hobby. Fun's good. It's always just been a hobby. And yeah. you're like, if if we ever get a sponsor, yeah, it would be nice. But I'm not imagining that it ever yeah. would. And honestly, if we ever do get a sponsor, I'd seriously consider it because I don't know if I want to kind of sully this thing with by introducing money into it. Yeah, I think I think you're right. Mm-hmm. I think it's yeah. fun, fun, fun's good, and then it can go anywhere. Yeah, really. Yeah, it can go anywhere. I think uh, I, the one if, thing. If you're, if you, technically sponsorships it had to be a neutral sponsor that wasn't related to anything we spoke about yeah yeah it didn't well, influence that well, that's to not ruin what we were doing well no it's fine well i mean audible it's fine that's the it's, one i mean it's fine kind of we, we pushed out their audible sponsorship we could talk about shit about our sponsors it's just they wouldn't sponsor us in the future mm-hmm. yeah. i know yeah. certainly the official podcast has lost sponsors in the past because they've because they've memed too much on 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 the ad rates yeah, <laughs> yeah just, like Audible could be a good sponsorship because it's just like it's something I know personally. I love listening to audiobooks on Audible. We've we've never said I anything bought... bad about. We've always we've always just yeah. About I don't how mean... they'll sponsor anybody, and to be honest, they do. They sponsor a lot of people. And I can probably recite the Audible uh, advert to you because you I've have. heard it so many. T- <laughs> I have done it. Yeah, I've recited it. Um, because I use Audible like every day. I hear the advert every single time i open it up and it's just it's great you know a bit of a bit of a tangent from anything we've been talking about can i just okay flipping amazon prime right okay this is this all but um this all but means we're never getting sponsored by audible because audible are owned by amazon is owned by amazon (laughs) but amazon Prime. it's okay audible i still love you amazon prime right you you buy it you pay for it and they you still get ads when you when you click on it, when you click on a thing, if I'm paying for a service, I don't want ads, the ads on it. Imme- you get ads. Amazon, for... you skip the ad immediately. It's as bad as paying. Like as soon as it comes. In. It's as bad as paying for a cinema ticket, and then getting tracked yeah. to other ads. Oh wait, that already happened. Well, I feel like with Amazon though, you do get ads, but that's because you get you pay money, but you get so many free shows. Mm. with it but they're not free you, like you it's get included in the payment well yeah if you pay what's it if i'm paying Mother for a service don't paid. show me ads i must say it's great if you're a well, student and you pay 35 pounds a year for it <laughs> yeah i mean that's i mean calm you don't even pay for it first you are not the payment in somebody with pays the amazon for prime account <laughs> my parents pay for a certain it. mother a certain <laughs> mother of mine pays for it i believe no, actually, it's like the actually, same with the, the... One, the one the one i use is my parents pay for it your 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 parents pay for the netflix i steal <laughs> yeah well i mean also the disney plus that's another one that's one that yeah. Or pays for and the Spotify. That's what else does she pay for? You know? I don't. I don't. I don't use the Spotify. They all go. You don't use the Spotify. Nah. Yeah. Well, I mean, with like the yeah. Disney Plus, we have just given the details for it to my aunt, good old Lindsay, in South Africa because she wanted to watch something and didn't have Disney Plus. So we're like, you know, what? we have it. Merry Christmas. Fair enough. So it's. <laughs> It's good though, well, it works. Uh should we should we uh wind this down? Yeah. Um yes. first of all, thank you very much to our guest. Thank you. Okay, really it was it. It's been lovely. You thank you so much for, for agreeing to come on. You have I d I I'll be honest, I didn't know quite what to expect, but honestly, you have so many stories, so many interesting stories and Mm. You were just such such a pleasure to have you on, and a beacon of just <laughs> oh gosh, it's been a pleasure. Honestly, Entertainment, it's been, yes, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'd love to, I'd love to do it again. Actually, it would be we, we'd we'd love to have you on again because yeah, there's more of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can I say shit? Oh no! Oh, wait, 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 say, say I've what you've you. <laughs> uh, we had a we had we had a mate. I think much the, worse has been said. We had a we yeah. had a mate on the stream yeah. um on Tuesday. Um, before he and before um, we started streaming, he was saying, "Oh, um, what's kind of the boundaries?" I'm like, "Listen, so long as you're not racist or homophobic, say whatever you that's want." It. That's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's my remit right there. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like yeah. within a safe space, like within a certain barrier. Yeah. 
yeah. say whatever you want. It's like I say, we're not it's getting monetized anyway, so, so we've got no monetization to lose yeah. by you saying shit. Yeah. Yeah. And if you, yeah. like with this, if you did say something racist or homophobic, it will just get cut out, you know? It would never okay. happen. So, I was about to say, I mean, I'd rather he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> it would never happen. <laughs> I mean, it would happen anyway, but... <laughs> Not, just not, you know not in my genetic makeup yes. <laughs> but um, thank you thank, thank you, you everybody who who is watching for watching um don't know depending on when you're watching this um go check out any recorded parts of the signal one if it's if we're speaking to you in the future and it's on in perth go and watch it if the film has come out go and watch the film <laughs> please film <have laughs> this will be out in Three. <laughs> this episode is out in three weeks. Yes, so... but, but it stays online forever. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm future proofing yes. it. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Merry Christmas. Happy <laughs> Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. Happy well, Valentine's well, Day. Happy, happy bonfire <laughs> of the vanities, whatever. And yeah, have a happy... great, no. great Easter. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye.